This week's Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, the official YouTube channel of Tipperary Camogie. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Tipperary Camogie PRO, Philly Ryan. Philly, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks uh, for having me on there, Ger. Uh, it was another jam-packed weekend of FBD Insurance adult fixtures, and we've a really exciting weekend coming up as well, and more games. So we might just start off tonight with um, the Junior A Championship. I was at the Killadangan and Drummond Inch Junior A Championship game at the weekend um, in Drum Village on Sunday morning. Drummond Inch winning that game 316 to 214. A great game, really lively encounter, uh, very high standard. And after the match, I spoke to Killadangan manager Mike Ryan. Hey Mike, uh, great match, exciting match, but I suppose you came out with the wrong end there. Yeah, look at it, I suppose it's disappointing with the result, but I suppose two. 14 to, to 316 it's great great scoring in a junior a game on a, on a sunday morning i know it's championship and look at drum second team so we knew coming up here today it was going to be tough um we needed to really get a result out of it but to be fair to drum they're, they're a better team on the day yeah very high scoring some super scoring as well today matter was, was your stand out forward you scored an excellent, excellent penalty for free and play uh you happy with her performance yeah, look, at, I suppose we're happy with everyone's performance. Sinead is, is obviously our leader. She's our, she's our county influence. So to be fair to Sinead, she'll, she'll give it 100%. Like all the other girls, when they go out, they, they go out to give it their best. Unfortunately, we came up short today. Again, we're only involved this year with them. So just, just trying to get the best of them and trying to introduce people as we can. And look, at the end of the day, we came up short. And um, I suppose very competitive group you have uh two losses now and a win is that right you bet Ted yeah is. yeah thanks for reminding us yeah we lost to uh temple Moor by a pint another great game and two weeks ago uh we bet feathered and uh unfortunately we came up short today but look at it's all down to the holy cross game now next sunday so it'll be again we'll go with the right attitude and, and we'll see can we get a result there and if we can happy days we'll move on and if we can't well then it's the end of the year for us unfortunately yeah so four teams come out with a group of five so you're still in a great chance and you know um Drum, I think Bet Holy Cross last week, you know, close game as well. So you're still in a great opportunity. So back to training during the week and focus on that game. Yeah, back to Tuesday night to try, try to regroup ourselves, really. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard. Look at it, it's the same with every club trying to get girls back from college and working and stuff like that. But look at we've a great bunch of girls and look at they're around a long time and we're trying to get young young girls into the panel as well. And the likes of Sinead and Paul as captain and we've a couple of injuries as well. But they're blending in well. Look at it's going to take time. We didn't expect a, a miracle this year, but we're happy enough with where we're going. We're just just coming up a small bit short, unfortunately. But look, at, there's no there's no arguments today. Drummer are a better team in the day, and, and, and they showed their class. Very good. Thanks very much, Mike. No problem. Thanks. So uh, as mentioned there, Drummond Inch winning that game. Um, you know they had a good spread of scores. Neve Ryan, uh, Casey Burke, Kate Fogarty all getting on the scoreboard. Emma Shannon had two goals. Disappointing, worrying thing there for Drummers as she had to come off injured after it in the second half. Uh, but I suppose the star of the show for Kiladanga was Sinead Maher. Um, I think she finished with a goal and 10 points, scoring a penalty. So very impressive performances there from her. Um, just in the other fixture then, we had uh, we had St. Risha's Feathered uh, went down to Temple Moor. Temple Moor winning that 3-9 to 10 points. Um, Philly, Temple Moor going well this year, up Junior A, just up from Junior B last year. Yeah, um, Temple Moor, two wins under her belt uh beating uh, St. Regis of Federton and also Pippin Kildangan in the opening round. So uh, two wins and, and out of four matches is, is really good for Temple Moor, yeah. So just looking at that group, the way it's shaping up, Temple Moor have two wins from two on six points. Drum then have two wins from two. Holy Cross uh, have played three games, one and one, one and last one. Uh, sorry, played two games, one, one and last one. Uh, Kildangan uh, have played three, one, one and last two. And then St. Regis Feathered have played three and lost three. So that's a group of five with four teams going through um, to the quarterfinals. The other group then has four teams in it. And I suppose they're just fighting and playing for places to see who they'll meet in this group. So Temple Moore and Drum out in front at the moment. Um, so this weekend then we have playing then, just looking at the fixtures, Drum are playing Temple Moore on Sunday morning. Uh, in that game is in Clamora at 11 o'clock. Uh, Kiladangan then are playing Holy Cross at 11 o'clock. That game is in Kiladangan. So that's a key game there, Holy Cross and Kiladangan. You know, like I said, Feathered um, have lost all their games so far. Um, and Kiladangan and Holy Cross be both looking for a win uh, and trying to secure a quarter final spot. Uh, in the other group, then, in the group 
your own club, Borlan, or in it. Um, I know you were at a game at the weekend, Borlan and Brian Bruce. How did that go, Philly? Oh, really, really close. It was um, 4 3 at the first water break, 8 5 to Borlan at half time. It was actually 10 points all a minute before the second water break, and uh, a high ball went in. Uh, the the uh, Brian Bruce keeper blocked it, and, uh, and uh, Murphy pounced for rebound to score the goal that gave a bit of daylight. And soon after that, Lisa O'Connor got a pint from the sideline from a free to give us a four-point lead. And the last five minutes was uh, batting down the hatches as Brian Bruce came close to getting uh, a few pints and goals, a few great blockdowns from the Borlaan girls. And uh, But really, you couldn't call it. If we were meeting again, uh, I couldn't call a result here. Two teams very evenly matched. So Borland have two wins from two. Uh, Moneygall also two wins from two. Uh, Brian Bruce and Balna yet to get a win. Um, so where does Sarah Delaney actually, your, I suppose, tipsy or Camogie player, where does she play for Borland? She's been playing centre forward in one match and she played some of the time at full forward. So um, uh, basically um, moved up there to strengthen our forward division to try and uh, help our score power, I think. And we have a lot of backs on the panel anyway. So uh, this year's um, manager, um, uh, Christy Clancy's in from uh, McCarthy, Corkman, former principal of Littleton, is in training for at the moment. So uh, uh, they've moved around the team a little bit. And uh, we've got a, a, a lot of under-18s playing, maybe seven under-18s playing at the moment in junior A. So a fairly young Borland team. But an equally young Brian Bruce team uh, faced us on, on Saturday as well. In that group, Moneygall had a three-point win over Balna. Uh, 12 points to 9 um, I know that was a very tight game and it's going to be really interesting to see how this weekend's fixture is going because I suppose Borland and Monegal I suppose the top two teams are facing off each other and Brian Baruz and Balna I suppose the two teams who haven't had a win yet so we we'll really know I suppose after this weekend who's looking to be the top team in that group and maybe who's who's struggling there in fourth position Could you? how do you think those games will go with this weekend? Yeah, I, I, I don't think in the history of our club we've played Money Gall in the last few years anyway because a couple of years ago they were intermediate and we haven't met them since lately. So we've no idea um, how a Borla and Money Gall match to go. Um, um, the, the other two teams, Ballina and Brian Baruz, uh, we've played both of them there. Ballina looks to be much better this weekend. But um, on form, I'd be expecting Brian Baruz to win by a pint or two against Ballina uh, from seeing the two teams against Borla. But it's hard to judge. All four teams are true anyway. Uh, so it's the quarterfinals on November 14th is, are, the key, are the key matches. Just looking back at the other group, Kildang and play Holy Cross this weekend. I think Holy Cross beat Kildang in, in the Summer League semi-final. So, but, uh, and Holy Cross for Woodhouse, um, the two county players, and um, maybe Kildang and Woodhouse, Sinead Maher. So maybe, maybe predicting a, a Holy Cross win there if they're going on Summer League form. Yeah, look, I was impressed with Killadangan at the weekend, scoring uh, two goals and 14 points against Strong. That was a high-scoring uh, 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 result for them, you know. Um, and there was different stages at the game where they dominated. But I suppose Drum were always just that bit ahead. And every time uh, Killadangan came close, Drum got uh, goals, I suppose, at key time. So um, I think Killadangan will still have a big say in this championship. So just to repeat there, the fixtures this weekend, uh, October the 17th, on Sunday, so that is Balna are at home against Brian Bruce, 11 o'clock, Moneygall versus Borland, and uh, that's in Moneygall at 11 o'clock, Kildangan versus Holy Cross, um, Kildangan are at home at 11 o'clock, and then Templemore versus Drum at 11 o'clock, and that game is in Clamore. So I think after this weekend, uh, you know, that we'll, we'll really know uh, how that group is, how that whole grade is shaping up and who's going to, who's looking like the firm favourites I suppose to win that Junior A Championship out, a very competitive Junior A Championship um, Speaking of competitive Junior A Championships, last year's um, team promoted up to Intermediate and Acavilla Kickhams have been going really well at Intermediate level um, they had a, a very big win at the weekend, were you surprised with that result at the weekend um, Nakavilla Kickhams 219 Shannon Rovers 1-9 I wasn't surprised that they won it at home and done drum against Shannon Rovers, but um, I haven't spoken to some Nakavella uh, Camogie Club people. They said that their their three county seniors were amazing. Uh, Quiva, McCarthy, Ema Heffernan, I think scored 110 or 11, and Arena Friday. So they've really shone, shone in, in uh, the weekend's match against Shannon Rovers. Uh, their, their county stars really, really um, 
carrying the team there. But they've lots of other good players. You know, Beth Ryan had played tip intermediate. Queen McCormick uh, played sweeper. She played county minor like this year. So they've plenty of talent in, in Noctavilla. And four wins out of four is some start for a team that's after being promoted, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Really impressive going there by Naka Villa. Um, wasn't that long ago they were contesting Junior B County Finals and uh, to see them performing the way they're going at the moment, they're, I suppose they're probably favourites now to, to be playing Senior Camogie next year. Um, like you said, they're top of that group now, played 4-1-4. Four, four. Uh, Shannon Rovers there, our second uh, in the group at the moment. Then, um, well, they're equal in points with, with Burris Lee. Then you have Newport, Banna Hinch, Killer One. And I suppose Kerr are struggling there, um, bottom of the group. But there's only four teams come out straight semi finals in the intermediate, so it's very competitive. So just to call out last weekend's results Bursley 213, Kilowan McDonough's 1 8, Nakavilla Kickham's 219, Shannon Rovers 1 9, Newport Ballon Hinch 112, Kerr uh, four points. And then looking ahead to this week's fixtures in the Interme- FBD Insurance Intermediate Championship. Burris Lee take on Nakba Villa, uh, Killer One take on Kerr, and Shannon Rovers take on Newport Ballon Hinge. So, how do you think that um, group is shaping up as a whole? And uh, would you be who do you think looks like the four teams that are, are going to go through straight to the championship semi finals? Well, um, it's kind of another top of the table clash between Burris Lee and Nakba Villa. Burris Lee can, can level with Nakba Villa on four wins, and they're at home against Nakba Villa. And they can actually, in a head-to-head, then uh, sneak top spot against against Nakavella. So um, that's an interesting match. Um, at the other ones, uh, Killerwan and Care is going to be a right, real dogfight because Killerwan really need that second win to make sure of getting um, up there in uh, into uh, the top four. Um, and Newport are on one win; they could also get a second win against Shannon Rovers. So it's really going to be neck and neck if Newport and Killerwan both win. It's going to be really uh, neck and neck to, to see who gets through there. Yeah, so really exciting, and, and I suppose still a lot to play for uh, in that group. And uh, we'll be looking, I suppose, uh, to see how those games go. And um, like I said, it's it's you know re- really close competition. Um, some surprises every week. I, I was certainly surprised with Nakavilla scoring two nineteen against Shannon Rovers, considering uh, they were. They got to intermediate county final last year, but um, I suppose Shannon Rovers are probably safe at the same time. And um, you know, I suppose I suppose a bit like the senior championship, there's been up and down results, and 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 I suppose no team has consistently won all their games. I think Bar Cashel, I suppose, um, are are unbeaten so far. So looking ahead to the senior um Camogie quarterfinals this weekend, uh. I also spoke to uh, Drummond Inch manager, uh, Pat Ryan. He's a senior and junior manager. And I spoke to him after the junior game uh, against Killadangan on Sunday morning and just got his thoughts on how Drummond Inch are progressing in both the senior and junior championship. Okay, I'm joined now by Pat Ryan, manager of Drummond Inch Junior A and senior Camogie team. Pat, uh, a good weekend, two wins from two um, in the senior and the junior. You must be happy now going away here this morning. Yeah, good weekend. We needed to bounce back. This weekend with the seniors from last week's defeat to Eric Carty and um, yeah we overturned we, we, we attitude was spot on we were very very happy with the performance against Tordis because we, we we knew how we knew the pedigree they had coming over so we had to be we really really on our game and we we did we did it from one to fifteen we really put it we really showed up and put in a great performance and a word there on Joan Ryan a hat trick uh, I suppose. Uh a Drummond Inch legend and come up with a hat-trick there yesterday uh, was pretty impressive. She's unreal, she's unreal, yeah. She keeps, she just keeps going, she scored three goals. I think she scored a couple of points as well. She's unreal, she just, her attitude is, is fantastic. You couldn't buy attitude like that and she paid off for us. Three goals, three, two, I think she scored yesterday. She's fantastic. And she's a, she's a role model for any young girl coming up along. She's great. Um, so the group games are over now. Um, you had... You know, you had a, the defeat to Anna Carty, but three wins against Tumivara, Trinonti and Turles Arsfield. So overall, you're, you're, I suppose, how are you feeling after the group games? Is the job done or are you disappointed? No job it? done. No job done. We've no, there's, no, there's no trophies for group games winning. You have to, we have to knuckle down now. The next one is, is Silver Mines at home in the quarterfinals. That's the next focus. Um, group games, yeah, we came out. All you have to do is qualify. We had to, all we want to do is get our home game. We have that mission accomplished there, and we just silver mines our next game. We don't we, anything before or after doesn't matter. 
And would you be happy with how the panel are going with training and injuries or? Yeah, we're look, look it, with a few niggly injuries. That's that'll that'll happen, but we, we'll get we'll get over. There's nothing you can do about it. Panel fantastic. I, again, after the defeat against Anna Carty, we had forty two in the training last the, the next night. So. It shows what it means to them, and they, they were hurting after it. And we, we regrouped, and we had the performance we had last day. And the juniors here today against Kiladang, and were absolutely fantastic. Their, their, their work ethic and their attitude matches that of the seniors. So we're in a good place at the minute. Yeah, so just a word on the juniors today 315, 214, was very big scoring. Um, you must be happy with the forwards there. 315, fantastic scoring. Yeah, happy with the forwards. But everyone, like that, the forwards doesn't happen unless the midfielders and the, and the full back line and the half back line are working as well. So it's a full team effort. You can pick out individuals, no problem to do that. But without the back, without the work, like the, the full back line today gave an exhibition of bringing ball out time after time again. And look, it's a team effort. It says if the backs aren't working, it won't get the ball to the forwards, we won't score. So it, it, it all joins up. But today is, again, extremely happy with the performance from everyone. And you've two wins from two now, beating Hoy Cross last week. So next up is Templemore. Uh, that'll be another tough game for the juniors. It will, and the same as the seniors, it's just our next focus. We've got, we regroup again Tuesday for training, and we, lo we look forward to the weekend, and hopefully we get another win there and move on again. It's just, it's just one, one step at a time every time. Thanks very much, Pat. No problem. So great weekend there for Drum Lynch, winning both the senior and junior, but uh, it's really hotting up in the senior championship. We're true to... Uh, quarter final stages now. Um, Anna Carty versus Nina is the first of the FBD Insurance senior quarter finals. Um, Anna Carty finished in top of group one, group one on head to head with Drum and Inch against Nina, who I suppose didn't get, record any points um, with, with, with three losses, but at the same time, uh, they finished fourth in that group, but at the same time, I suppose they had their strongest performance in their final game against Cash and Philly, and I suppose that'll give them a boost going into play Anna Carty. Oh yeah, they, they, they were um, leading 3-8 to 112 uh, just after the water break against Cash uh, this weekend, and could have held out for the win. So that if they're um, if they're able to match the the, the group winners Cash uh, last this weekend. Uh, Nina are capable of, of, of good performances. Also, their Silver Mines match, 218 to 214, was a really close affair, which uh, Silver Mines just held out for the win there. Kind of a derby match between Silver Mines and Nina every year. So, <clears throat> Nina have had two very close matches with Cash and Silver Mines. So, um, do you know what I mean? They're, 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 they're still a force to be reckoned with against Anna Carty. Anna Carty have had fantastic wins there the last two matches, but slipped up badly in the first match against. Uh, Turles Sars is losing by 12 or 14 points so it's hard to know which Anna Carty is going to turn up but they're they're hitting form now Anna Carty haven't beaten both Drum and Tenolte so possibly uh, look at the results you'd be tipping Anna Carty there Yeah Anna Carty really got into their groove since their first game um, three wins and a trot and um, are looking very strong you know just even on paper there you see Anna Carty um, right down the middle very look, looking really strong and uh, Rosanna O'Donnell at full back has seemed to really settle into that new position. Karen Fox at centre back, Gemma Fox midfield, Siobhan O'Neill always very strong at centre forward. Eilish McDonald, I know she was excellent there, full forward against Drummond Inch, kind of roamed the around and caused Drummond Inch all sorts of problems. And that's just up the centre. He's still Gene Kelly, Sienna Walsh. So very strong, very balanced team and a Carty team. And I suppose they're a club that have had huge success underage down through the years. And it's probably coming through fruition now for their senior team. Oh, yeah. They, they were winning minor A's and under 16 A's there for a few years with the batch they had um, of players, Gene Kelly and Rach Dwyer and Gemma Fox. They won a lot of county um, A medals. So I think it's coming, it's coming good for them now this year, seemingly, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And, and I think they will be firm favourites going in against Nina. But like you said, Nina have shown um you know a lot of positives in in their four in their three games and I suppose when you've Grace O'Brien in your team um you know she's a lethal forward and anything can anything can happen um, but they will need a huge performance to uh, I suppose to cause an upset there against Anna Carty Anna Carty as well at home is a huge advantage um the other and game then, Grace O'Brien Grace O'Brien played full forward rather than wing forward this weekend I don't know it's because of an injury but seemingly she was very effective at full forward against Cashel. Yeah, I see Nina got three goals. I'm sure she she raised some of them green flags. I can actually hear who scored them, but um, yeah, she, I think I think she's a real threat in near the goals like that. Yeah, I think she got two of the goals. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, a second quarter final there then sees Cashel versus Turles Sarsfields in Cashel. 
Uh, so Cashel, I suppose, uh, raised, you know, I suppose, put a serious marker in the championship this year with a 2-12 to 1-6 win over Burge Sahara in the first round game. Um, really impressive performance, um, a great result for them to kickstart the championship. But I suppose they haven't had it all their own way against Silvermines and Nina. Those two games were closer, even if you compare it to Burge Sahara and Beckham more comprehensively than then Cashel did, but look, they still look very strong, a formidable force. Um, they're a young team, they have a lot of minors. Um, uh, we see Anya Dwyer there playing midfield, brings a lot of energy, and um, Kareem Blair, I suppose, serious, uh, had a great campaign with Tip Steeners. She's a serious player, Grace Maloney, Amy Cross. There's plenty of talent there in that Cashel team, a young team with lots of pace. Um, I suppose after the Turles Sarsfield had a heavy defeat against Roman Inch in their final group game, and that would probably make Cashel favourites. But I don't think Turles will fear playing Cashel. They would have met him a good bit at intermediate level, and I, I certainly don't think they'll fear playing Cashel. No, I think Turles Sarsfield um, uh, and Cashel went to a replay when they were intermediate county finalists against each other. So very evenly matched there. I suppose one thing is. The Cashel girls uh, have really uh, matured since then. A lot of them are under 16 two years ago there. A lot of them are, are minor now. So Cashel uh, have, have a, a slightly bit more experience in the team than they had. Um, I suppose Arlo Dwyer was playing that county final two years ago as well. So she's she's missing, which might uh, be an advantage to Torles Sarsfields as well. So uh, I, I just couldn't call the Cashel Torles uh, quarterfinal there now. Yes, we see against Roman Inch at the weekend, Karen Kane, they start in midfield and then they moved her into central forward, I suppose, to try and, I suppose, add a bit of energy and power for running there at centre forward. Um, probably Turla Sarsis, is uh, probably her best position is probably midfield um, for Turla Sarsis because I think they missed her when they took her out there. But against Roma the weekend, their forwards def definitely didn't fire for me, I thought, and um, they will need to up it. But we've seen what they can do. Like we said, they've beaten Anna Carty, the only team in the group that bet Anna Carty. And they came close to beating Clonanti. So they have plenty of ta talent in that third of Sarsfield's team. And I think if they can get it out of them at the weekend, I think that can be that could be a very, very close uh, quarter final. So that's Cashel and Turla Sarsfield's in Cashel. And um, the other quarter final then is Drummond Inch and Silvermines. Um, Drum finished second in group one, uh, up against Silvermines, who finished third in their group. Um, again, Drum on the back of uh, being current county champions. I suppose, and have an array of uh, Tiberi senior and intermediate players will be favourites for this game. But Silvermines did beat them in the league this year, albeit again with both teams were missing some county players. But, you know, Silvermines always give Drum plenty of it. And um, I think the Drum being at home as well is a big advantage. And on the back, I think, you know, Drum were very impressive against her, the Sarsfields. They bounced back from their defeat to Anna Carty. But, you know, I think if, if, if Silvermines make it a physical uh, battle and you know, really wear down the strum team, make it very hard for the forwards to click. Um, it could be a closer game than people expected, but I think if it's an open game, free flowing, if drum forwards get the space that they like, um, I could I could see drum winning this. But how, how do you think it'll go, Philly? Um, well, on paper, if you look at the seven senior panelists or whatever drum have, you'd you'd have to tip drum as as as, as hot favourites here. They've two county titles under their belt as well. They're gaining experience. Uh, <laughs> Had an impressive win against Turles Sarsfields, so you, you you probably have to tip a tip a, a drum for this one. Silvermines did have a win against Nina, uh, but um, lost against um, Borges and were ahead against Cashel, and then Cashel came back and beat them by five or six. So on paper you'd say drum drum should shade at this one. Yeah, drum must need Tracy is operating a wing back for them has been really good for them this year, but. Also, think I think she's a bit of a you know a loss at midfield where she would have played last year or even in the forwards. But you know the drum half back line is looking very strong there with the likes of Eve Tracy and uh, Eva McGrath there, even the Maureen Ryan there, a full back Maria Connolly. So I think I think Silvermines could struggle um, to put up a big score against Drum. So it'll depend, I suppose, a lot on how Drum's forwards go at the other end. Uh, Joanne Ryan, who won her first senior county title back in two thousand and three, had a hat trick against her at Sarsfield. So I suppose that shows class is permanent. Um, she, un unbelievable uh, with a hat trick um, after all the years of Camogie that she's played. But, um, you know, so that's going to be a very interesting game to see how that one goes. And the final quarter final, Burgess and Tuhara and Clonanti Rossmore. A lot of people would say this is the pick of the 
of the quarterfinals. What do you think, Philly? Oh, yeah, this is going to be a great match. Uh, it's, it's really, really uh, exciting quarterfinal coming up there. Very hard to call. Four just didn't seem to be uh, ready for battle against uh, Cash the first time, got bet double scores, but came back the following week and had a big, big wins against uh, Silver Mines and Nina and really have, have concentrated really well since and played well. So uh, it's an old tee, as we said. Uh, a huge score against Tuby Bar at the weekend and uh, Casey Hennessy, Katie Darvin, Emer Burke, a lot of the other forwards scored and not dependent on caught last weekend. But uh, overall, you'd have to say Claude Quirk and Sarah Friday might end up being a loss to any club team. So the yeah, Borges have lost a few players as well. It's I just it's impossible to call, but Clenolty seem to have more more talent coming than, than Burgess from the younger end of it. I know Burgess of Emily, Morrissey, Katie Grace, a few younger players coming in as well. So uh, very hard to call this one, Geraldine. Yeah, I think a lot might depend on Amy Kendi. Um, I know, I think, was it against Silvermines? Uh, she caused all costs, sorts of trouble for uh, the Silvermines defence. Um, you know, I think on her day, she's one of the best forwards in the county. And I just wonder, Emma Luthman has been playing wing back there with Clonty. Will they decide to put her back to pick up Amy, whether that'll be full full back or corner back? I do think they need to um to man mark her. I, you know, I think someone needs to to be given the job to pick her up. Um, I think Courtney Ryan, Cora Hennessy caught the band. They're three key players, you know, for, for Clonty. Loads of experience, and I think you know if they win their individual battles, um. They'll have a big say, but then you have, you know, you've Quiva Maher going very well at centre back for, for Birds to Hire, Jenny Grace in attack. Um, you know, she's a real playmaker. The way she links up with Amy Kendi is vital, I suppose, to the success of Birds to Hire. So loads of interesting matchups. Um, you know, it's a repeat of last year's county semi-final, which which uh Clonty won. Missing Claude Quirk since then, but have Cora Hennessy back. Um have Trey Short in the goals, who's really good, really steadied up, steadied up things back there for them. Really impressive goalkeeper. And, um, you know, both teams have a lot going for them. Burgess have put up very big scores against Silvermines and Nina, really getting into their stride now. And, um, yeah, I definitely think this is going to be, a, a, you know, definitely, prob- you know, a really exciting, close, intriguing battle, I suppose you could say. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to call that one at all, Geraldine. I'm going to predict that one. And it just look look the big win. Um, I suppose Clonty had at the weekend against Tumi Var. I just think it meant it showed that they really meant business. They went out, got the job done, and and you know I suppose there was no let up. Unfortunately for Tumi Var, I think they were really trying to prove a point and maybe build up confidence in their forwards. And like you said, sometimes it can be accused of overlying on caught the van. And to see others getting on the scoreboard is going to be was vitally important for them. So just to recap then, the four quarterfinals, FBD Insurance Senior Championship quarterfinals this weekend, Anna Carty versus Nina, Cashel versus Tara Sarsfields, Drumlin versus Silvermines and Birds to Hire versus Clonty, Ross Moore, I suppose with the first name teams are all at home there. Um, just moving on, we're at the FBD Insurance Junior B Championship quarterfinals. We have Laura against St. Cronin's, McCarthy Burris versus Miley Rovers, Carrick Swans versus Portro, Garton Hoof versus Bur- Ballingarry. Uh, four Big matches again this weekend in the Junior B Championship. Philly, any predictions there on who will win, Laura and St. Cronin's? Yeah, uh, St. Cronin's have had some heavy defeats this year. So, And Laura have had a fantastic record of getting to Junior B finals. Haven't been getting over the line, have been barely beaten in, in finals for a couple of years. So you'd have to predict Laura going to win that one, especially with home venue. Um, <laughs> moving on to the next one, McCarthy against Mile Rovers. Uh, McCarthy had a huge win in the, in, the, in the Junior B Summer League against a fairly good Gorton Who team. So uh, you'd have to predict McCarthy will, will win that one in Littleton. Uh, the next one is intriguing now because Carrick Swan and Portro are very evenly matched. Uh, Portro ran Gorton Who close to the weekend, one uh, was a 1 4 to 2 5. So um, that's one I couldn't call. Carrick Swan against Portro, a long distance Portro to travel down to Carrick. So maybe home venue will be a bit of an advantage for Carrick Swan there. So a, a slight uh, a slight uh, guess that Carrick Swan could pip uh, Portro there. And finally, another derby game, uh, Gorton Hoog against Ballangarry there. And uh, I think Gorton Hoog hitting form since they got to the league final. 
they, they came back and gave McCarthy a much better game the following week in the actual um, Junior B proper. So maybe predict another home. So four home wins there. Uh, in my predictions, Geraldine, uh, Laura, McCarthy, Carrick Swan and Gordon Who, what may be a shock there with Portro uh, with an away win. Very good, Philly. Thanks for that. And then just finally, we have the FPD Insurance Junior B2 Championship quarterfinals. So two quarterfinals this weekend on Sunday at four o'clock. Cashel versus Brian Bruce and Toomey Vara versus Holy Cross. So that's uh, all four teams. That would be their second team. And, um, Cashel have had some um, big wins so far in, in that championship. So I'd say they'd be favourites going in against Brian Bruce. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah, Cash, Cash will be favourites. And I think Brian Bruce might have moved up a couple of girls to the Junior A team against us last weekend. So uh, Brian Bruce might have lost a, a player or two to their first team. So um, you'd have to predict Cash with the scores are hitting so far this year to be the winners there. Yeah. And Tumi Vara and Holy Cross there. Um, I know Tumi Vara had a, a defeat at the weekend and they lost to Silver Mines 3 10 to 2 points. Um, but then they had a big win over over Shannon Rovers um, the week before, scoring two fourteen to one point against Shannon Rovers. Um, so I don't know how would you see that one going to Mivar and Holy Cross. Again, it depends on how many girls are, are available for these matches. Uh, some clubs have injury problems or um, uh, work uh, unavailability due to work uh, problems. So it can happen at, at at second team level more so. So um, it depends on what team Holy Cross and Tumivara put out here. Both both have had good performances. I think Holy Cross got to the, the Junior B2 league final this year against Cashin. So Holy Cross have plenty of talent there too if they got to the league final already this year. Thanks, Philly. Uh, that's where we'll leave it. Um, like you said, a very exciting weekend again coming up this weekend for the FBD Insurance Championship. Um, all the fixtures, up-to-date fixtures, can be found on the Tipperary Camogie website, tipperarycamogie.com. And just to wish all the clubs in action this weekend the very best of luck. Um, thanks for tuning in to the Camogie Report podcast. If you liked the video, please give us a like. And don't forget to subscribe to our official YouTube channel.